Hello viewers, this is Walgoda Renal taking you through this tutorial for a level applied mathematics. In this video, we're going to talk about the topic of vertical motion and uh, gravity. This is the topic in mechanics, and it, this video will be suitable for students in senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So vertical motion under gravity is subdivided into two. One is upward motion under gravity and the other is downward motion under gravity. So what we are going to do, we are going to start with downward motion under gravity. So in this case we shall suppose a body of mass m kilograms dropped in air such that it experiences negligible air resistance. The body moves in a vertical straight line and the only force, you know that word only force acting on it is its weight. So this will be the body. So I think I said that the, there, there is weight which is mg but the other forces will be equal to zero. So and this a acceleration is in the direction of motion which is downwards. Therefore when I use Newton's second law I remember that F equal to MA, therefore where F is the resultant force in the direction of motion. So the resultant force will be MG minus 0. So I come and say MG minus 0 is equal to MA. And when I make A the subject, I come up with A being equal to G. Therefore, what we are going to do is that now the formula, the equations to use for downward motion will be got by replacing A with G for the equations of linear motion so we should have been using so v the first equation will now be v equal to u plus gt where there is the where there was a we have put there g second equation will be s being equal to ut plus a half gt squared so where there was a we have put there g and third equation will be v squared equal to u squared plus 2g s so where there was a we have put there G. So these are the three equations which will be used for downward motion. Now next will now be upward motion and uh, and uh, gravity. Still we shall suppose a body of mass m kilograms thrown vertically upwards in air so that it experiences negligible air resistance. So this body will move in a straight line and the only force acting on it will be its weight so we can also show it here so this is the body this is the weight and the other forces are zero so this acceleration shows the direction of motion that's why it is pointing upwards now when we use Newton's second law of motion you should remember that F is equal to MA where F is the resultant force so in this case resultant force has been the direction of motion so it will now be zero minus mg so we shall come here and say 0 minus mg is equal to ma so when i make a the subject i'll come up with a being equal to negative g so that means that in the equations of motion equations of motion we shall replace a with negative g to get the equations we shall be using for upward motion under gravity therefore the first equation will now be v equal to u minus gt Second equation will be u t s equal to u t. Sorry, first equation is v equal to u minus g t. Second equation is s equal to u t minus a half g t squared. And third equation is v squared equal to u squared minus 2 g s. So what you should notice is that g is a constant and in principle math it is given by 9.8 meters per second squared unless stated otherwise so with that knowledge you shall now go through some examples so example one will came will come from your 2018 paper 2 question 1 and it says a stone is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 21 meters per second then say calculate part a the maximum height attained by the stone and part b the time it the stone takes to reach the maximum height so what you are going to do we shall start with a simulation for the information given. So we have given that this is the ground, this is the particle. So what we shall do when we run the simulation, 
when I run the simulation, I think I can see that it goes up and up to maximum point and then returns back to its original position. So if you have to make a sketch for that, we shall come and draw something like this. So in this case, we when you are drawing it, sketching the motion, we leave a space between this this line and this line and the from between the go upward motion and downward motion just because we want to distinguish the two otherwise the line in which it goes upwards with is the same line in which it returns back to the ground just as you can see in the simulation but for a sketch we have to leave some distance between so that you can easily show that this is upward motion and this is downward motion so shall call the starting point to be A, maximum point to be B, and return point to be C. Therefore, the initial velocity will be 21 meters per second, and maximum height is H max, then the velocity with which it is the ground will be V. So with that information, we can now come back and answer the question. They want us to get the maximum height attained by the stone. So we shall use the third equation of motion where v squared is equal to u squared minus 2gs and when I substitute v, v is 0, u is 21, g is 9.8 so and this is h max. So h max when I make it the subject I will come up with h max being equal to 22.5. So basically that's the value for the maximum height which was required. In part A, now in part B they said find the time the stone takes to reach the maximum height. So they want the time the stone takes to move from here up to from point A to point B. Now what you should realize if you look at the simulation, at this maximum point, the particle is momentarily at rest. So momentarily at rest, it means that its velocity at that point is zero. So the final velocity is zero, initial velocity is 21, and the distance moved is h max. So with that information, you shall come back and go to part B. Part B, you shall say, Using the first equation of motion, v is equal to u minus gt. So u is 0, v, sorry, v is 0, and u is 21, g is 9.8. So I'll have only one unknown, which is t. And when I make t the subject, t will be equal to 2.1429 seconds. So basically, that's what they wanted, and now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 will be for substitution, and B1 is for simplifying, and A1 is for the output. For part B, M1 is for the substitution, and A1 is for the output. So now we shall go to the next example, that is example 2, which came from UNEB 2016, paper 2, question 1, and say that a ball is projected vertically upwards and returns to its point of projection 3 seconds later. Part A, find the speed with which the ball was projected, and part B, find the greatest height reached. So what we shall do, we shall first make a simulation of what is given so when we run this simulation it is the same as you can see that it moves upwards up to maximum point and then comes back so when we make a sketch for that we shall come up with this whereby a is the starting point b is the maximum point and c is the return position so that means that initial velocity is not given so it should be u and final velocity is v then maximum height is h max so that information I can now come and get the speed with which the ball was projected. So I'm going to use s equal to ut minus half gt but what she realizes that now the s we are going to use will be zero because s means displacement and this particle if you look at it it returns back from the very point it started from therefore the displacement will be zero vertically. So you shall come back here in the second equation and substitute s will be 0, t, u is what we want, t is 
3 g is 9.8 so when i simplify and make you the subject i'll come up with u being equal to 14.7 meters per second so basically that's what they wanted in part a and now let's go to part b so part b we shall use the third equation of motion v squared is equal to u squared minus 2gs so when I substitute v is equal to 0, u is 14.7 as we calculated it here and g is 9.8, s is h max which they want in the question. So when I simplify and make h max the subject, I'll come up with h max being equal to 11.025 meters. So basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how max can be awarded. So m14 substitution m1 for simplifying and a1 is for the output for the part b m1 is for substitution and a1 is for the output so basically that's how the five mass could come about so now shall go to example three example three came from uneb 2019 question five paper two and it says a stone is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 16 meters per second from a point up h meters above the ground level the stone hits the ground four seconds later then they say calculate part a the value of h and part b the velocity of the stone as it hits the ground so what we shall do we shall first make a simulation for the information given so we have a particle which is at a, dis at a height capital h from the ground now when we run this simulation So to move upwards and then go back downward, move and then downwards to the ground. Remember, started from the cliff, then goes upwards, then downwards to the ground. So when you make a sketch for that, we shall come up with this. Okay, then we shall label point A starting point, B is the maximum point, and C is the ground point, final point. Therefore, we are given that initial velocity is. 16.16 meters per second and final velocity will now be v then the cliff with h meters so that is why you put here up to h then the maximum height attained will be h max from the point of projection now with that information we can now go and answer the questions that follow but if they want the value of capital h So we now say that for motion ABC, now motion ABC is from here up to through the maximum point to the ground as you can see in the simulation from here up the maximum point and then to the ground. So now what you should remember that this H is below the point of projection. So any distance below the point of projection will have a negative displacement. Therefore, we shall come here and say that from the third equation, second equation of motion, this s will now be negative h. Therefore, now substitute will come up with negative h being equal to 16, which is u times 4, which is t, and g, which is 9.8. And when I simplify, I'll come up with capital H being equal to 14.4 meters. So they basically, that's what they wanted in part A. Now we shall go to part B, where they want the value, the velocity of the stone as it is the ground. In other words, they want this value of v so you come and say that for motion a b when you look at here motion a b is upward motion therefore shall use the equations for upward motion and say v squared is equal to u squared minus 2 g s and when i substitute v 0 u is 16 and g is 9.8 S is H max. So when I make H max the subject, I come up with 13.0612 meters. Next, I'll now go to motion BC. And like you see, motion BC is a downward motion. So we shall use the equations for downward motion. Therefore, we shall come and say that V squared is equal to U squared plus 2GS. I think we'll see that now we use plus. We are here we are using minus because AB was upward motion and BC is downward motion so when I substitute what you should remember is that your S from B to C the S will be H max plus capital H and we know that H max is 
640 over 49 and capital H is 14.4 so in other two you'll be able to get your S and when I simplify I'll come up with V being equal to 23.2 meters per second so basically that's what they wanted in part A and B now let's see how much can be awarded so for part A this is M1 for substitution and this will be A1 so you change that this is A1 and that A1 is for the simplifying to get the value of H then B1 for H marks M1 is for substituting here and A1 is for the output so basically that's how the five marks could come about so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on composition and resolution of forces so if you're not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on composition and resolution of forces has been uploaded otherwise thank you for watching and if you know any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit as a family